It starts right now. A Renewed Mind, hosted by Dr. H. Dante Duckett, pastor of New Kingdom Faith Christian Church. Position yourself right now to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, here's our host, Dr. H. Dante Duckett. Welcome to our inaugural podcast of A Renewed Mind. I'm your host, Dr. H. Dante Duckett, pastor of New Kingdom Faith Christian Church located in Glen Burnie, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. I'm so excited that God positioned you to hear what he has shared with me about the power of a renewed mind. Let me start by saying I'm a very practical teacher. You will not get a lot of big words from me because I don't know them. You will hear me teach a topic which should help you apply what you have learned to help you live a fulfilled life. Our scripture text for our podcast will come from Romans 12, 1 and 2, the New Living Translation. Listen to what it says. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Discipline the patterns of your thoughts is essential for you to thrive in every season you're in. However, although it may be essential, it is also the most difficult process to accomplish. I'm becoming increasingly frustrated at how we can be told to do something without giving the process on how to do it. Paul says renew your mind in Romans, but the question must be raised and then answered. How do we renew our minds practically? Not some pie in the sky or supernatural process or super spiritual process because many persons can lay on their face, prostrate every day in the presence of the Lord. But folk got to go to work. People have lives they must live. This is why I'm compelled to teach practical steps to accomplishing the will of God for your life. Everyone is not called to be a pastor. Everyone is not called to be a missionary. There are folks in here called to be presidents of colleges, but this podcast is for everyone who wants to live their life on purpose. This is for the civil servant worker, public safety employee. Why? Because we need kingdom minded individuals everywhere and not just working for a church and just doing ministry in the church. But this cannot be accomplished until many of us renew our mind. Paul states we must renew our mind. But how do we do it? We must first go on a journey to discover our thought patterns. This is why this Bible study tonight is entitled The Process and the Power of a Renewed Mind. There is a process to renewing your mind that you must undertake before thriving can take place. And to use the power of renewed mind, you have to understand that there are certain practical steps you have to take. One of the first questions you have to ask is, how does this happen? When I researched this, I came to, it came to my mind when you actually go to a doctor, he or she will share with you, will ask you, how did this problem occur? One of the first questions they will ask you is, how did this happen? Then the doctor will ask you a series of questions first on which you may be, uh, which may be, well, what are you doing? What were you doing when you started feeling the pain? The doctor is, is on his preliminary journey of discovering how the pain started. It's one thing to help cure the pain, but it's another to make sure the pain does not come back. Let's go to Mark. 9 17 and 24 is one of our scriptures for tonight then one of the crowd answered and said teacher i brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it's whenever it seizes him it throws him down he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid so i spoke to your disciples that they could cast it out but they could not he answered him and said oh faithless generation How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said from childhood. And often he has thrown him into both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. 
immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Look at what Jesus asks in verse 21. Why? Because he's helping the father go on a journey of discovery. Jesus then says, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. This is going to help someone here on this podcast. I don't care how long you've been dealing with this way of thinking. God says, if you believe all things are possible. Therefore, you can change because all things are possible. I don't care if it's from your childhood or it's something that happened last week. You can change and renew your mind. But you need to be like the father and declare, Lord, help me, help my unbelief. Lord, show me where it all started. Then help us believe we can beat this. There are going to be times that I'm going to give you some very critical points to this podcast and you may need to write them down or go back and re-listen to them. This is the first critical point you need to ha- you need to write down. You need to discover, excuse me, discovery is critical to the process of renewing your mind. Let me repeat that. Discovery is critical to the process of renewing your mind. I believe that the process of renewing never stops. This is why you must always keep yourself in the position of learning to ensure that renewing essentially becomes part of your life. Therefore, our first step in renewing our mind is to begin the process of discovering our thought pattern. Why do we think the way we think? Let's go through the word of God tonight to discover certain thought patterns and the origins of of these patterns. What you are looking for is which pattern connects with your life. Let's first acknowledge that you are spiritually a spiritual mental being. Your spirit and your mind have power over your flesh. Dennis Kimbrough states, everything you see in this physical world began as ideas in your mind. Your physical world is nothing more than lingering evidence of that which has already taken place in your mind. There are three areas we are going to explore to help us discover what has shaped our thought process. Your history or your story, your recent historical or current context, and lastly, your relationship with God. Let me repeat that. The first one is going to be your history or your story. The second point we're going to review is your recent historical or current context. And lastly, your relationship with God. Let's first explore how your history has shaped your thought pattern. Let's go to Exodus 1 and 8. Look at what God says here. Now, there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, look, The people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. And so go up out of the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities for Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in the dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and brick and in all manner of service in the field. All the ser- all their service in which they made them serve was with vigor. Listen, the Hebrews were enslaved in Egypt for over 400 years. Now, you must recall that when Moses delivered the Hebrews from Egypt, he was constantly dealing with murmuring and complaining. In fact, they felt it was better for them to go back in Egypt because of the conditions were better. Could it be that since we grew or you grew up in Egypt, that you still have the lingering effects of a slave mindset? Listen to me again. Could it be that since you grew up in a form of Egypt, 
that you still have the lingering effects of a slave mindset? Listen to this. Is your thinking shaped by the oppressive lifestyle you grew up in? When you grow up in oppressive conditions, then it's very difficult for you to see the glass half full. When you grow up in oppressive conditions, your thinking is on how do I please those over me? Or it could be the very opposite because those over you in position of authority, do you rebel against them because they remind you of the oppressive lifestyle you previously lived? Is that the reason you don't respect authority? Your thought patterns are directly affected by your history and the issues you have been a part of. They set taskmasters over them to afflict pain. Pain that had been afflicted upon you affects how you think. Do you feel like you have to fight your way out of everything? Do you feel like you need to just hide in a shell because you don't like to deal with confrontation? This story about the Hebrews also says that much of your thought patterns are from external influences versus eternal. My wife and I had the pleasure to going to, to, going to the African American Museum some time ago. One of the first exhibits we saw was the slave ship. Our history as African Americans and the way we think is significantly different than persons who came to this country without being enslaved. Do you think it's just happens, it's happenstance that there are so many absentee fathers? When the slave masters routinely removed the fathers from their families. When in the 60s and 70s, the government almost made it a requirement for the man not to be in the house to receive government assistance. This is your history. This is our history. Because this is another point you need to make sure you get. Your history affects how you think and of course how you think dictates how you live let me repeat that your history affects how you think and of course how you think dictates how you live let me go back to verse number 15 and read some more scripture for you then the king of egypt spoke to the hebrew midwives of whom they named a one of them was shipporah and the name of the other was pua and he said, when, when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and see them on their birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, then they, she shall live. But the midwives fear God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, why have you done this thing? And save the male children alive. And the midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrews, Hebrew women, are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. Therefore God dealt with well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. And so it was, because the midwives feared God, that he proved household provided households for them. So Pharaoh commanded all the people saying, every son who was born, you shall cast them into the river and every daughter shall live. Listen to this. These oppressive tactics have been going on for years. The male babies have been systematically killed because they pose a threat to the establishment. Listen to me. This is not a social action teaching, but can you now understand why certain young men may look at authority as a threat. Why they are disrespected, why they are disrespectful to anyone that has position over them, male or female. Before you can thrive, you must take the time to reflect on your history because if you don't, what you haven't dealt with will come up against you. The history of your family and their conflict and their conflict resolution system may be the reason you have anger issues. How your parents dealt with the problem in the home is probably how you're going to deal with the problems in your own home. Much of your frustration is how we resolve conflict with others and within ourselves. Are you okay with someone having a different opinion than yourself, but still able to have a healthy conversation? 
Let's trans let's transition to the next area. Current and recent historical context. Listen, as we go on this journey of discovery, we are attempting to discover why we think the way we do. We know that history ha- is a major contributor. Now let's take a look at how our current or recent historical context has shaped our thought pattern. Let's go to what's becoming one of my favorite books in the Bible, and that's the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter one. Let me read it to you. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of this man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Mahalon and Chialon of Bethlehem and Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives, two wives, they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of one was Oprah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Mehom and Chilon also died. So the woman women, the woman survived her two sons and her husband. Now, verse 19 and 21, listen to what it says. Now, the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord has brought me home empty. Why do you call me Naomi since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. I just started, stated that there was a famine in the land. Her husbands and sons are dead. She's the only one left from her original family. She left Bethlehem to go to Moab, which in itself was not a good decision. But the decision was probably made by her husband and now she has to move back with nothing. Look at how her current context is shaping her thinking of herself. She first told her daughter-in-laws to go back because she had nothing to offer them. Once one decides to go back, but the other decides to keep going. For many of us, our current context is shaping our thinking of who we are. Is this the reason you are always negative and bitter? Your current context has birthed a bitter spirit. The people of Bethlehem were excited to see her, but look at her response. Don't call me Naomi, call me Myra, which means bitter. We must be very careful not to allow our context to control how we think, especially how we think of ourselves. Yes, the context may not be ideal. It may, it may be a little off because of whatever may be happening. But you have the power within yourself to change the entire atmosphere by changing your thinking. This pandemic, which is our current context, cannot control what you think about yourself. Listen to this. We can change the atmosphere by our thinking. But the change you want to see, Naomi couldn't see beyond her context. In fact, I really don't blame her. If you had to bury your sons and your husband, you would have been the same as she did. Listen to this point that I got to make to you. If your context is filled with a vast number of traumatic events, then those events will without a doubt control how you think. Trust will be a major issue if your context has seen events that most persons have not seen. Why? Because what you thought should have protected you hasn't. Now it is very difficult for you to trust. Naomi's context was also affecting Ruth while she was with her. This is why it is extremely, you have, this is why you have to be extremely careful how you handle your context because you could see your same reactions from persons who are close to you. Your children in most cases 
will not do what you say, they will do what you do. But a context, but in, but a context in which there is love and little drama has the same effect in the lives of the ones who occupy that context. My home wasn't filled with a lot of drama. We had our issues, but for the most part, we lived a decent life with a single mother. My mother never talked down about my father not being around us. I don't remember having to hear a lot of negative talk around our house. The glass was always half full in my life. Even if you say it's half em- half full because half empty, I know it's half full because I know how God is going to work things out in my life. This is why as parents, we need to provide an atmosphere that breeds positive thinking, that breeds success, that breeds love. This will help facilitate healthy thinking. We must discover our thought pattern and why we think the way we think in order to begin the process of renewing our mind. You can be super spiritual all you want, but it's because we haven't addressed certain areas of our lives that we keep repeating the same cycle of dysfunctional behavior. The word says faith without works is dead. You can believe all you want to believe, but you must do some work. Lastly, we must deal with your relationship with God. This will help shed some light on how you think. Listen, if you really believe that God can do can do certain things, then there are things you will not even think about doing. Or there will be things that you will think about doing. Before any of us take faith steps, we always think. Let's take a look at a few examples. Let's take a look at a few examples of different levels of relationship with God that affected the thinking of the people. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15, 7 through 11. As Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havila all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt, he also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lamb, and all that was good. And were willing to utterly and were unwilling to utterly destroy them, but everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. Listen to this, y'all. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I greatly regret that I've set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord all night long. Saul, although he was chosen by God to be the king, had an immature relationship with God. His lack of trust in God was consistently on display during his tenure as king. This is the moment when God gave him specific instructions to follow. Listen to this. This is another point you need to take. Your level of obedience is directly correlated to your level of trust in God. How you think about God controls many of the decisions you make. Saul made a decision, which means he had to think about it first. His decision was to go against God's plan. His decision in the end cost him his position. Let me help you with this. Does your decision to obey or not obey is a result of, from the fact that you have an issue with authority. Since God is in control in authority, does that reflect in your relationship with him? Your thought patterns reflect if you are for or against God in some of the major decisions you have made in your life. Let's go to another text. Daniel 3, 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, 
to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. The three Hebrew boys defied the king's command because they trusted God. The boldness in them declared who they put their trust in. But before they could say they were not going to answer him, they had to think about it first. Their relationship with God was so strong that it didn't take long for them to decide to go with God. Listen to this next point that you need to get. Your thought pattern as a Christian is directly linked to how strong your relationship with God is. Christians who walk by faith have a passionate, powerful relationship with God. So it's fair to say that if most of your decisions are based on your own personal feelings or an outcome that will benefit you, only then that would mean your relationship with God isn't as strong as it should be. This is why we must deal with our thinking before the decisions we are making are offensive to God. Listen to this again. This is why we must deal with our thinking because the decisions we are making are offensive to God. These three Hebrew boys decided that if you want us to defy God, then you're going to have to kill us. Do we have that kind of boldness right now? Can we make those types of decisions that make us sacrifice our own bodies or our own lives? Because we must get to the point that we have faith in God and God alone. It doesn't matter what you are up against. It does not matter who's up against you. You're going to have to stand with God. The power of a renewed mind will make you unstoppable. The power, listen to this next point you need to get. The power of a renewed mind will make you declare for God I live and for God I die. You can have it all because my renewed mind says it doesn't belong to me. It all belongs to God. Listen to that again. If you want to take my own life, I understand that my life doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God because my mind has been renewed. You have to get to the point that you have you have to get to the point that you don't need to hold on to anything because you know it all belongs to him. A renewed mind is content in all circumstances. Understand that God is positioning us even now to have a renewed mind. Do not forget what our text, what our, our foundational scripture is for this podcast. Romans 12, Romans 12, 1 and 2. God has given us that text. God has given us that text for the specific reason today. To make sure as we go on this journey with this podcast, in this podcast, that we understand that we got to let God transform us by the renewing of our mind. But the first step is we have to go on a journey of discovery. Why is my th- discovering my thought pattern? Why do I think the way I think? The way you think didn't just happen. The way you think didn't just manifest itself out of thin air. The way you thought has a lot to do with which the way you were brought up your current context, and your relationship with God. Look, tune in for our next segment for Discovering Your Thought Pattern Part 2 on our podcast. I'm your host, Dr. H. Dante Duckett, pastor of New Kingdom Faith Christian Church. Remember, let God transform you by the renewing of your mind. You have just been blessed by the transformational teaching of Dr. H. Don Tate Duckett. Tune in next time to another segment of A Renewed Mind.